We gather tonight at a moment, momentous time in our, in our state's history. Bold reforms are underway. Thousands of our fellow Floridians have assembled here in our capital. Some to criticize our budget priorities, far more to thank us for our willingness to make hard choices. For years, politicians have not dared to face the full extent of our financial problems. Politics prevailed, even when the numbers did not add up. All the cans that have been kicked down the road are now piled up right in front of us. Floridians have been encouraged to believe that government could take care of us. But government always takes more than it gives back. Some thought that businesses could tolerate a strangling web of regulations, and that government could get, can grow without starving the private sector and destroying private sector jobs. The result of that experiment is in. Government grew way beyond its ability to pay for its promises, and the jobs disappeared. The first step to better times is acknowledging that government cannot afford what some have come to expect. <laughs> Doing what must be done will not make me most popular. But I'm determined to make Florida most likely to succeed. <laughs> On my first day in office, I ordered a review of every regulation in the pipeline and every contract exceeding $1 million. These steps sent two clear signals. First, that Florida will not allow unreasonable regulations to stand in the way of job creation. And second, that we intend to watch state spending like a hawk. On my watch, we will never allow another wasteful project like the Taj Mahal Courthouse to slip under the radar. <laughs> we also sold the state airplanes, as I had promised to do, and we created the most fiscally conservative state budget in the country. Our jobs budget is targeted to create private sector jobs, increase accountability, and reduce the size of government. Every day since elected, I've gone job hunting for the people of Florida. In my business career, I was never shy about picking up the phone and making a cold call to try to make something good happen. As governor, I've been making those calls each and every day to recruit job seekers, our job creators. Now, we'll continue making those calls each and every day until every Floridian has the opportunity to get back to work. As we meet tonight, unemployment in Florida stands at 12 percent, 12 percent. While this legislative session is a regular session, in many ways, it's an emergency session. For the 1.1 million Floridians who are out of work, this is an emergency. They are running out of options. The unemployed have heard enough talk. They're saying, show me the jobs. And tonight, I'm here to show you some new jobs. We have a long way to go, but we're absolutely on our way. Joining us tonight are four business leaders, one who decided to move their business to Florida, and three who decided to expand their business right here in Florida. I'd like to recognize them now. Armand Lazan is president of Chromaloy, an aviation parts manufacturing company that just opened a new manu manufacturing plant in Tampa and created 400 jobs in Hillsborough County. Also joined tonight by David Mears, the Chief Operating Officer of Vision Airlines, a company that helps put tourists onto Florida's beaches. Vision recently began flying to 23 cities from Destin, less than a year after the, the economic damage from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. So thank you very much, David.
Vision going there is expected to add about 4,600 jobs right there in, in that area of the state. So it's, it, I love it. It gets closer to the 700,000 jobs I committed. <laughs> so I keep counting. In Southwest Florida, Reinhold Schmieding is founder and president of Arthrex, a manufacturer of state-of-the-art medical devices. Tonight he's here to announce that Arthrex is breaking ground on a new 160,000 square foot facility that will create 150 new jobs every year for the next five years. Thank you very much, Reinhold. And finally, Dean Minardi, CFO of Bing Energy, is here, is here with us. Bing Energy, a California-based company, was courted by offers from several states, but Bing decided to come to Florida in December and Tallahassee, which is nice. Um, the reason why Florida won, Dean said it was our plan to eliminate the corporate tax. Thank you very much. These leaders like me share a very positive view of Florida's economic potential. On behalf of the people of Florida, I want to thank all of you for your faith in Florida's future. I urge every member of the legislature to join me in making job recruitment a daily task. I want to encourage each of you to become a jobs ambassador and direct new prospects to me, and I'll make all the phone calls, and so we can, so I don't have any problem calling people. And, and flying there and talking to them. Uh, I did one last night in Jacksonville, and hopefully they'll move here, 400 new jobs. Uh, so we can work together to create potential job creators. Ask, for, ask the existing Florida bu business owners, what can we do to help you expand your business? And business leaders around the world, why wouldn't you move to Florida? Last July, I submitted a detailed plan to the people of Florida to create 700,000 jobs over seven years. They reviewed the plan, and voted to enact it. Last month, I delivered to you a budget that puts that plan into action and cuts taxes by $2 billion. <laughs> These tax cuts put money back in the hands of families and business owners who will grow private sector jobs. An important priority in our jobs budget is to consolidate government's economic development efforts into a single, highly focused agency. Working with our public-private partner, we will have the resources to be effective and the flexibility to adapt to particularly promising opportunities. The agency will be headquartered two doors down from me, and its work will never be far from my, my mind. I come to the Office of Governor with 35 years, with a 35-year uh, career in, in uh, the private sector. I'm going to use that experience on behalf of all the people of Florida. 